Story 1. Bill Thompson worked for an animal research company. The company was specifically built to determine the endangered animals and make measures to prevent extinction. The motive was to rehabilitate the injured animals, prevent people from cutting down trees in the forest, and make it easier for the land animals to live. Bill was enthusiastic about animals. He believed that humans are making it difficult for the animals to live. Their habitat is being destroyed and they are hunted unnecessarily. He wanted to play his part in the betterment of wildlife. The manager called Bill and told him about his upcoming journey to the woods. His task was to go to the African savanna and generate a report on the jungle's inhabitants. Bill was excited to explore the wilderness, and aside from that, this journey could be a reason for his promotion. This task boosted his morale. He got a chance to see the wildlife closely and determine their problems. He didn't want to lose this chance. Bill started his journey along with three other members. Bill was the group leader, and he had to give directions to everyone. Before starting their journey, Bill told all the members to keep the necessary equipment with them. He knew that there could be a danger. After hours of strenuous journey, they finally reached the African wilderness. The sun was blazing. All of them enjoyed the extraordinary habitat of the jungle. They could see the stunning giraffes, the zebras, and elegant gazelles. The butterflies were flying high, and the birds were chirping. There was complete silence in the jungle except for the sounds of these animals. There was no human existence, only the animals and these researchers. They ate some snacks, took pictures, and collected data. They could feel a pinch of cool breeze from their open-air jeep. Suddenly, the jeep jerked and stopped. Bill stepped out and opened the bonnet to investigate the problem. He checked the engine and used his toolkit to determine the defect, but all was in vain. He had almost tried every technique, too, but he was, after all, a researcher, not a mechanic. They decided to establish their camp and find a nearby mechanic in the morning. Bill cooked delicious food while the other team members brought water from a nearby lake. Survival was difficult as the sun was setting, and they could encounter wildlife inhabitants, but all of them were skilled people. They had all the necessary equipment and knew when and how to cope with calamity. All of them ate the food and discussed their morning research strategy. Bill explained to them about the data collection techniques. He wanted to do maximum work in the morning, as they had already wasted one day enjoying the beauty of the jungle. His deep voice turned into whispers when they heard a rumbling growl. Their eyes widened and their hearts skipped a beat. Bill could feel the responsibility as he had to lead all the team members. In the next 10 minutes, they saw a fierce predator standing right before them. Bill shouted instructions and asked all of them to stay composed. Everyone was anticipating it. They couldn't make any move that would disturb the lion. Bill was the only guy among them who was not trembling with fear. The lion could feel the quivering bodies of all the other team members. Bill observed that the lion was more frustrated than motivated to eat them. He didn't understand its reluctance, but he knew the lion's tiredness was their only hope of survival. Bill had to make an intelligent move despite death dancing before him. He was the leader and he had to save the lives of his mates. He couldn't afford any irresponsible action from his end. Bill yelled out loud and commanded all the team members to stand still. He ordered them to not make any move. He crawled to the camp and brought a piece of meat. Bill came back. His eyes were locked on the lion's intense gaze. All the other team members were standing like statues. The sun had almost set, and the stars had started to appear in the sky. The rest of the members held their breath. They were about to witness the risky endeavor of their captain. Bill took a bold move and approached the lion. He tried to send the lion a message of peace, but the animal became increasingly hostile. Once more, it growled. It appeared to be starving. One of the team members cried. Bill ordered him to stay quiet. The lion seemed merciless. Its mouth and scaly tongue showed that it desperately needed human flesh. Its eyes were flickering with curiosity when it saw the piece of meat in Bill's hand. 
The lion stopped growling as it had to focus on the piece of meat. The lion took a cautious step forward. Its powerful muscles rippled. These were two different creatures trying to protect themselves in different ways. The lion couldn't afford the presence of a human in its untamed land. It wanted to either injure them to death or frighten them. They couldn't run away because the research project was significant for their careers. They had no choice. They had to encounter the lion and complete the project. Bill was about to throw the meat toward the lion, but before he could do that, one of the teammates threw an ax toward Bill. It was a sensible move, as no one could guess what the lion would do next. No one knew what it was planning, to eat the piece of meat or Bill. Bill hid the ax in one hand and continued his evasive maneuvers. When Bill threw the meat to the lion, the animal leaped straight for him instead of devouring the food. The hungry predator did not want to settle for a piece of meat. He wanted a great deal more. Bill took the ax out and forcefully pounded it onto one of its legs. The lion growled loudly. It started peeling skin from Bill's legs. Bill could feel his bones cracking and the sharp teeth immersing down his legs. His injured leg throbbed with every heartbeat. Bill was about to faint because of blood loss, but staying awake was the only survival option. He had to regulate his amygdala's automatic release of fear hormones. He mustered up his courage and forcefully hit the lion, this time on his body. The lion stepped back, leaving Bill alone. It became wary. The lion saw how powerful Bill was. He might have thought Bill was a hunter. Bill pounded his ax on the ground. The lion was constantly stepping backward. His mouth was closed, and he was in a defensive mode now. Bill was sure that the lion won't be attacking now. Meanwhile, the other team members fired a gun in the air. The lion couldn't bear the noise and left the camp. After a few minutes, they couldn't see even a sign of it in the wilderness. It had gone back to its place. Everyone rushed to Bill, who was profusely bleeding. The doctor on the team brought preliminary first aid. Bill was crying with the pain. He had already lost much of his blood, and he was near fainting. The doctor stitched the wound and applied some painkillers. The pain was real. The doctor gave him a sedative too, because the pain increased with every minute. The doctor immediately ordered to delay the research project and take Bill to the nearby hospital as soon as possible. They packed their stuff and headed to the hospital. After tons of medications, Bill regained consciousness. The doctor advised cutting one of Bill's legs as the infection could spread to the entire body. Bill had lost his leg in a research project that was very close to his heart. He lost his leg because of the wild creature when he only wanted the betterment of its wildlife home. Though it was a tough decision and there was no other choice, Bill turned out tougher than all of these things. Story 2 Lily Anderson was a curious eight-year-old girl. She lived in the middle of a bustling city somewhere in the north. Lily was in love with animals. She had an ambition to become an animal researcher. Her parents supported this vision of their kid. Lily loved to keep pets. She had lambs, cats, dogs, and turtles at her home. Despite many pet animals, she was more interested in wild animals. She wanted to understand their behaviors, how they lived, and their habits. She also wanted them to enjoy their freedom, and that's why she was sad for the animals in the zoo. Lily was an adventurous soul. She always wanted to seek new experiences. She insisted her parents go to the nearby zoo. Looking at Lily's excitement, Mr. Clark, Lily's father, agreed. They decided to go to the zoo on the weekend. Lily was super excited. They left for the zoo on Saturday. She could hear the chirping birds and the growling of lions as she entered the zoo. Hundreds of kids were talking to their favorite animals. There was a symphony of excitement everywhere. Lily wanted to explore the zoo. Animals gave her pleasure, and she believed them to be her treasure. Lily hoped to see all of these animals. She wanted to understand their language, so she'll know whether or not they're happy in their cages. 
After visiting all the other animals in the zoo, Lily went to the lion enclosure with a sparkle in her eyes. She was excited to see the king of the jungle. She wanted to see if the jungle king was happy with the facilities in the zoo. She heard the lions growling out loud. She was a bit afraid too, but her excitement overpowered her. She saw a crowd standing near a cage. Lily requested her parents join the group and ask about the issue. Everyone there seemed sad. Lily went near the cage and saw an injured lion. The magnificent lion was lying on the ground. The lion was crying with pain and affliction. The zookeepers had given it some sedation drugs to lessen the pain. They were constantly directing the crowd to stay away from the cage. The sedative drugs could create exhaustion in the lion. The animal seemed weak, but the zookeepers knew about the side effects of sedation. The drugs could increase the lion's energy. Lily was very concerned. Despite all the warnings, she was standing with her hands on the cage bars. Everyone was calm because there was no chances of an attack. The lion was lying straight with his eyes half closed. It could see the world through its half closed eyes. Everyone observed a change in the lion's behavior after a few minutes. The lion growled. It was regaining consciousness. Lily's heart sank at the sight. The lion started jumping and moving. Everyone was happy at this sight. The poor lion was recovering, but agitation could be seen in all of its moves. The lion came near the bars. Lily was afraid, but she knew about the protection. She believed that lions couldn't cross the bars. The lion came nearer and nearer to the bars. She extended her hand, hoping to touch the magnificent fur. Her father shouted to Lily to stop, but she was very curious. She yearned for the thrill of coming into physical contact with the jungle's deadliest predator. The injured creature seemed desperate. The lion jumped suddenly, and its sharp claws found a way through the gaps in the bars. The lion's claws grazed Lily's arm. Lily cried out with pain. Her arms started to bleed. Everyone stepped back to save themselves from the injured lion. Lily's father started shouting for help. The lion immersed its jaws in Lily's arm. There was a fountain of blood. The metallic bars turned red. Two different creatures were suffering differently. Lily could see her bone cracking. The sound of cracking bones enhanced the trauma. Lily was trying to pull herself back, but it was increasing the pain. She experienced the difficulties animal researchers and veterinarians faced at a very early age. The zookeepers turned the emergency alarm on. When Lily's parents went to rescue her, she screamed so loudly that she passed out. The lion wanted to pull Lily into the cage. No one knew if the motive was to eat Lily or eliminate its frustration. Whatever it was, Lily and her parents were going through real trauma. Their holiday turned into misery. An emergency specialist arrived. One hit the lion with a heavy tool while the other fired into the air. The lion got scared and stepped backward. It couldn't bear the pain and lay down on the ground. The crowd was sad that Lily had lost her entire hand in the encounter. Lily's hand could be seen behind the metallic bars, filled with blood. Lily had to live without her natural hand for the rest of her life. She lost her hand because of her compassion for animals. The doctors gave first aid and painkillers to reduce the little girl's pain. Then, an ambulance took Lily to the nearby hospital, where she regained consciousness. The artificial hand was inserted so she could do her chores. Meanwhile, the lion was heavily sedated to cope with the frustration. The crowd dispersed. It was a very traumatic zoo journey, not only for Lily and her parents, but also for everyone who saw a little girl encountering a beast. The incident served as a sobering reminder of the untamed nature of wild animals and the importance of respecting their boundaries. Story 3 Lucas Smith was a nature and animal lover. He lived in a small cottage on the city's outskirts, away from the hustle and bustle. The jungle was a few kilometers away from his house. He used to cut wood, sell it at the local market and earn a few bucks to meet his needs. One bright sunny day in July 1935, 
Lucas went on with his routine work in the jungle to cut wood. Lucas always kept protective tools with him in case of any wildlife encounter. He often went deep into the woods. He knew that the magnificent creature lived in this untamed land. Lucas was 53 years old then and always needed naps between his routine. After cutting down a whole tree, Lucas sat down for a rest under a tree. Lucas kept his tools near him because he knew about a fierce lioness in the jungle. The woodcutters were quite afraid of it. The lioness had recently given birth to three cubs, and it was overprotective of them. Its love for the cubs was immeasurable. The lioness had been known to roar at the woodcutters, sending them scrambling back to safety whenever they entered the jungle. Lucas was a master in his work. He was cutting wood for 25 years and observing animal nature too. He knew how to cope with an overprotective wild animal, but was also aware of the lion's violent nature. It's impossible to tell whether or not the lion is only being opportunistic. The roar of a lion roused Lucas up. As the lioness approached, he hastily retrieved his ax. At the same time, Lucas exuded assurance and anticipation. The lioness was wary because it could tell a human was nearby. Suddenly, the lioness and one of her cubs hopped out of the bushes. The lioness was overprotective of her cub. It was watching Lucas with one eye and its cub with the other. It couldn't afford any harm to its baby lion. Lucas didn't want to upset the lioness in any way. He lobbed some meat toward the lioness. The lioness did not hurry forward to claim her prize, but instead bolted for cover among the bushes. The young cub tagged along. Lucas couldn't believe it, but knew it would return with an improved strategy. The sight of a person in its territory unnerved the lioness, and he could see the frustration on her face. Lucas started cutting the second tree. He had cut almost half of the tree when he once again heard the loud growl of the lioness. He quickly grabbed his tools. This time, the lioness came with all three of her cubs. They all seemed aggressive. Lucas did what he could do to soothe the lioness, but she remained anxious. Lucas had to stay composed. Only a few meters separated the four of them, so rushing back home was impossible. Lucas's age and slow reflexes meant he couldn't keep up with the lions, but Lucas excelled in climbing. Growing up, he climbed many trees and was fond of hiking too. Lucas decided to climb up a nearby tree. The lioness kept on observing his moves. It didn't jump to eat Lucas. It was simply sniffing the air. When Lucas had climbed almost half of the tree, all four encircled it. He started growling out loud. Lucas was afraid. They began to hit the tree firmly with their heads. One of the cubs was inserting its jaws into the tree. They wanted Lucas at any cost. They couldn't allow a different creature to step on their land. Lucas made an irresponsible move. He forcefully threw his ax down toward the lioness. He was targeting the lioness, but it hit one of the cubs. The lioness got aggressive. It tried to jump up on the tree, but couldn't. Lucas threw another ax. This time, it hit the lioness herself. The encounter was getting traumatic as the lioness wanted to take revenge. They all started to hit the tree with all their might. Lucas could feel the tree coming out of the roots. With one strong hit, the tree fell on the ground along with Lucas. Lucas controlled his nerves and started running. His house was two kilometers away. He had to run so far. The lions followed him. After one kilometer of the marathon, Lucas collapsed. The lions crowded around him. They growled viciously. They were proud of themselves. Now that they got their victim, all they had to do was eat him. Time for a party right now. Lucas could see the angel of death in front of him in the form of four lions. Good memories surfaced in his mind. He reflected fondly on his rural upbringing and the quiet winters spent there. He finally remembered his time in the jungle and his love for the animals. The lions were excited. They didn't want to waste a second to eliminate the human. They attacked Lucas. He had nothing to protect himself. The lioness peeled off his skin and cracked his bones, and Lucas died. No one heard his screams. 
an animal lover and a nature enthusiast, lost the encounter. The lion seemed satisfied and happy too. The next day, a resident found Lucas's body. He saw blood everywhere near the dead body. The wildlife authority ordered the residents to stay away from the jungle until the cubs were independent. They didn't want another death. This lioness had just proven that the queen of the jungle will stop at nothing to protect her cubs and provide them with a safe place to live in.